Hi, I'm Marcel Payas. I'm here for an internship of six months uh, in the theory team, and uh, my internship is under the supervision of Raoul Mezer. And today I will speak to you about boson sampling that presents a quantum advantage. But our physical systems are not ideal, and so we want to know if uh, the quantum advantage is preserved or not. First, I will speak to you about uh, boson sampling. When you want to understand what is boson sampling, I think it's good to have in mind the classical picture, that is a Galton board. So you have a board with pegs, red balls on top, and uh, at the bottom you have uh, boxes. So the red balls will be dropped, and they will be deflected at the pegs, and they will uh, end at some box. If you were to run the experiment another time, you could have um, other slots for the, 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 the balls. Where the balls are, we call it an output. The output is probabilistic. We also call it a sample. So the, we could have many, many samples uh, for many times we run the experiment. Knowing this, what is the, the analogy between the Galton's board and the Boson sample? You have to just substitute the balls with photons, small particles of light. You substitute the wooden board with pegs with the optical linear circuit. An optical linear circuit is made with uh, beam splitters and phase shifters, and you substitute the boxes with uh, the photon detectors. That would tell you if there is a photon or if there is no photon. Having the Galton spot in mind is not enough to understand uh, how boson sampling works, because you have also to take into account uh, quantum effects, and one of them is quantum interference. I will give you an example of a quantum interference. You take one beam splitter, two photons on, on uh, two different paths, and the beam splitter either reflects or transmits the light. And then you would detect where the, the, the photons are. For example, if we do the experiment, they either go upward. If we were to redo the experiment, uh, they could go uh, rightward. So you see, the photons are always detected on the, on the same path. And this is called the Hong model effect. OK, great. So what does it mean uh, physically? What is actually a boson sampler? So you have your photons that are incident on your optical linear circuit. In the optical linear circuits, photons interfere. They can choose one of the many possible paths, as we, we've seen with the Galton's board. And yet at the output, we have a linear superposition of states. The detectors will only probability detect one of all states. And what is fascinating is that with a classical computer, we can't officially reproduce this ex experiment. So with this quantum device, we have a quantum advantage over a classical computer. But what happens with, when we have noise, when we have noisy physical systems? So first, there are sources of noise that suppress the quantum advantage. The first one is distinguishability. What it means physically is you could tell uh, which photons is which. This, for example, because uh, of the wavelength, photon doesn't have the same color, or maybe the polarization. So if you are able to label your, your photons by red and the other one by, by green, they can't interfere. So there is no longer Hong model effect, for example, and they are like classical particles. And if we have classical particles, we have a classical efficient simulation for boson sampling with uh, distinguishability. Okay. So now another source of, of, uh, of noise is linear loss. You can picture the photon that is uh, going through the linear circuit, so it goes straight, and at some point it encounters an atom. An atom is made of a nucleus and electron. So the photon goes right to the atom, then the atom gets excited, so the photon gets absorbed, and through a heat provocation, the atom can uh, exist state. And so now you have a physical understanding of why there is loss in the circuit, because photons get absorbed by uh, atoms make up uh, the whole uh, linear circuit. So knowing this, what happens with the complexity? As there is less particles, and as you introduce some classical probability, because you don't know which photon will be lost or not, with these two ingredients, you have a classical efficient simulation for boson sampling with linear loss. Now, a third source of noise is double emission rate, G2 of zero. So in the ideal case, G2 of zero is equal to zero. This means that a source 
will emit only one photon when you asked for one. So with ProHG1 minus G2 of 0 over 2, the source could emit one photon. And with, uh, with uh, the ProHG uh, G2 of 0 over 2, the source could emit two photons. And so this is a double emission at the sources. What happens to our experiment? Do we still have an experiment that can't be reproduced by a classical computer in an efficient way? That is the question that remains unanswered, and it is the question of my internship. So thank you. This was my presentation, and if you have any question, feel free to, to direct them to me.